Hey guys. Um, thank you for tuning in once again. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that's a little bit of a taboo in Christian circles, and that's uh, drinking alcohol. Um, a lot of people uh, use scripture to say that you can't drink, and a lot of people use scripture to say that you can drink. Uh, so, with so many um, different opinions going around, so many people getting angry about this, I wanted to kind of give a little bit of a, uh, maybe a little bit of a voice that will help you guys figure out where you want to stand on this. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is, is it wrong or is it right? Um, many people point out the fact that, um, that the Bible doesn't say anything against drinking. And you know that that's true. In fact, in First Timothy 5:23, um, Paul tells Timothy, uh, "Have a little wine." You know, um, the Bible doesn't say anything against drinking. It just says not to get drunk. You know, all throughout Proverbs, I, believe it or not, I didn't look up any scripture references for this. Um, I know in Proverbs it says not to get drunk. I know in all throughout the, in the epistles it says not not to get drunk, to be sober-minded, and stuff like that. Um, oh, I did look up some references on that. Um, but all throughout the Bible, if you just uh, spend a day studying, I'm sure you'll find it all throughout there. It says, you know, don't get drunk, don't get drunk, don't get drunk, over and over again. Um, let me move on. Um, some people try to justify 1 Timothy 5.23 by saying, oh, Tim, Timothy had a ulcer or something where the blood helped him, I mean, the wine helped him to feel better or helped clear out his system or something like that. Well, that's great and all, except we have no proof of that. We have no proof anywhere of Timothy having such a condition that wine would help. help. It's not in here. Uh, it might be in one of the outside sources. Uh, maybe some of the church's founding fathers said something about it, but I don't recall anything off the top of my head. Um, some people try to say, oh, it wasn't wine as we know it today. It was more of a water, which is true to the fact that they didn't have soda back then. And uh, it was either water or wine or, you know, a few other small drinks like from juices from fruit or whatever. But once again, we have no proof of that. Um, uh, I've done a, I've done studies on this before, and I was never able to find anything that was able to say, yes, it was a different wine. As far as we can tell, it's the same fermented wine. Um, oh, another thing that people get confused is there is a difference. The wine Jesus made wine at that wedding, but according to, to the vow he was under, uh, it was not wrong for the wine. He, we don't have any record of him drinking or being drunk, either him drinking or being drunk. We have a record of the people at the wedding drinking, but they were not under the New Testament commandment. So I'm, I want to make the distinction now so that we don't confuse the Old Testament with the New Testament. A lot of things changed uh, and were updated in the New Testament. So uh, I just want to throw that out there now so you don't get confused later. Um, uh, one thing I want to say is that God teaches moderate. That's what God teaches. Uh, you know, he never says, do not drink, he just says, don't get drunk. A lot of times, he's okay with us doing things, it's when it becomes obsessive when, when we do it too much, when we focus too much on it. Um, like, uh, video games. You know, I'm sure God's okay with a Christian playing video games. Movies. I'm sure God's okay with Christians watching movies, watching television shows. Uh, doing things that don't involve nothing but church. I'm sure God's more than happy with, with Christians having fun. But when it becomes obsessive, when that's all you do, you know, if you sit at your house and play video games all day, something needs to change. When you ignore all your responsibilities to watch your TV show, something needs to change. When you orient your whole life around something that doesn't have anything to do with God, something needs to change. You know, it's true that as married people, our, our wives are our, our ministry. That is true, absolutely. Go minister to your wives. Men, you need to step up and be the spiritual leaders. Amen. Go ahead. Yes, absolutely. But even a wife can become a stumbling block because God has to be first in your life. Wives, that goes for you too. Uh, your husband cannot take place over God. It has to be God foremost. 
it, that's what I'm saying is God teaches moderate. Go moderate on things, you know. It's not that you have to completely abstain from it. Some people do find it easier to completely uh, uh, abstain from something. So it's just not even, not even touch it. That, and that's fine too. Uh, once again, it's your own discretion. Um, um, uh, let me say this. If you have to fight your conscience, uh, justify it. If you really have to fight it, don't do it. There's three stages to sin. Now, the first stage is fighting, fighting uh, your conscience. Uh, the second stage is uh, seeking to justify yourself with other people. And then the third stage is living boldly in whatever you chose to do. Um, if you start having to fight your conscience on something, be aware. And if your conscience isn't really bothering you that much, but you're always feeling like you have to justify yourself to other people, just be aware, you know, um, even if it, even if it isn't a sin, whether it is or not, if you feel it as, it, as though it is a sin, abstain from it. It's that simple. Um, I don't want to get too into that because I'm going to bring that up later. Uh, does it benefit anyone? Does you drinking or not drinking benefit anyone? We know for a fact that not drinking can sometimes benefit people because a lot of people are obsessed with uh, Christians. Uh, with watching Christians and making sure that they don't mess up at all, that's true. So we know that it would benefit at least some people to not drink. Would it benefit anyone to drink? Do you really need to drink? See what I'm saying? Does it, does it, it doesn't really matter if you drink as long as you don't get drunk, but does it, does it matter, you know what I'm saying? It, what's it going to look like? Um, the next question would be, why do you feel the need to drink? Um, are, you, are you using it as a kind of scapegoat? Like, you're running from something, maybe, or are you just doing it because you enjoy the flavor? See, uh, these are questions to ask yourself. Um, and then, how much is too much? It has been said that even a small uh, tablespoon of alcohol can impair your vision, but then there's, or impair, I'm sorry, impair your thinking uh, slightly. But then there's also a lot of people who can't hold their liquor. So that brings up the question, well, how much is too much? Um, and I just want to read a few verses to you. Um, and once again, I'm not going to tell you that, that drinking is wrong, that Christians have to completely abstain from drinking, and I'm not going to tell you that it's right. I'm c trying to stay completely in the middle of this, but I just want to give you guys somewhere to go with this where you don't, where you know what the Bible says and you don't feel guilty about it, or you do feel guilty about it, or just whatever, that you know where to go with it. Uh, the first scripture I want to read is Ephesians 5:18, and it says, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. So that's pretty simple, pretty cut and, you know, cut and paste, don't get drunk, you know. Uh, the next scripture I want to read to you is First Peter, um, the first chapter, in uh, the 13th, 13th verse, um, and I'll post all these uh, below in the, in, the, in the description box. Uh, feel free to look it up on your own Bible, uh, you know, uh, just, I just want you guys to be open to uh, understanding what the Bible says, and then go from there, you know. It's no rush to stop drinking or start drinking. Just, you know, be aware of what the Bible says, and then uh, go on from there based on how your conscience feels, what God has said to you, you know, etc., etc. Uh, therefore, prepare, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that would be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That was 1 Peter uh, 1, uh, verse 13. In 2 Timothy... Um, in chapter 4, Paul writes to Timothy, obviously, and says in the 5th verse, 